Matter notes, part two. Matter is made up of atoms. Um, in previous, in the previous note set, we talked about how matter uh, is anything that has mass and volume. Kind of went over that and reviewed that. It's uh, mass and volume were not new concepts. This is a good review. Now we're kind of tying it into content. Uh, so our second note set here is that matter is made up of atoms. And we're going to talk about how the atom is the smallest piece of matter, uh, the parts of the atom, the periodic table a little bit, how to get information from the table, and then last but not least, how to break down a compound into the uh, different atoms that make it up. So matter is made up of atoms. The atom is the building block of matter. So if we were to take matter and cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it, keep cutting it till we got to the very smallest piece, that small piece would be the atom. And that's the smallest piece we can get uh, that would still have the properties of the, the item. The atom has three main parts. The proton, which is the positive charge particle in the nucleus. The neutron has no charge. It's neutral. It's also found in the nucleus. And then the, the electron, which has a negative charge, and it's found on the outside of the atom orbiting around the nucleus. So the nucleus is in the center of the atom and is made up of protons and neutrons. So let's take a look at the model of our atom here. Okay, so this is the model of the atom down here at the bottom. The positive charged particle there is the proton. The particle that has no charge is a neutron. And then the negative charged particle is the electron. Again, the nucleus is in the center and is made up of protons and neutrons. Okay, so here is our tree map for the second concept of matter. Uh, just kind of follows the flow. Start at the top, work our way to the bottom. So matter is made up of atoms. Atoms are the building block of matter. Uh, the atoms can combine to form molecules and compounds. Now, molecules are formed when two or more atoms join together chemically. However, they don't have to be different. We can have two or more of the same type of atom bond and form a molecule. For example, um, oxygen gas is actually two oxygen atoms bound together to make the gas. Ozone is three oxygen molecules bound together. Hydrogen gas is usually two hydrogen atoms bound together. So those are all molecules. Okay, now when we get two different atoms joining together, then now we start getting into compounds. So compounds are molecules that contain at least two different atoms. So HCl, which is hydrochloric acid, contains H, which is hydrogen, and chlorine, which is Cl. So those two come together and you get a compound. Water is H2O. Hydrogens and oxygens come together to form a compound of water. So you'll hear me say molecule of water, compound of water, both are, are okay to use. Uh, it's just when we start having you know, oxygen gas, hydrogen gas, those are more on the molecule side. Okay, so atoms can come together to form molecules and compounds. So this is our periodic table. The periodic table is just a chart that organizes all the known elements according to their properties. Uh, you, for our purpose, we don't have to get too in-depth with the periodic table. Um, just how you can find uh, an element when you're looking for uh, to find what the atomic number is and the element name. The easiest way to do it is by symbol. So if you're trying to figure out what H is, you'd find the H on the periodic table. And um, there you are. And it'll tell you the uh, element name. So eventually you'll learn how to read the table and get to a point where just based on it, 
on an element's location in the table. You can tell if it's going to be a very reactive substance, if it's not going to react, if it's a metal, a non-metal, a gas, so on and so forth. Okay. The periodic square. So here we go. This is the key to getting the information about a particular element off the periodic table. So you look at the square and you can uh, learn a couple things about that particular element. One, the number at the top is the atomic number. That atomic number is going to tell us the number of protons in the nucleus. So in our example here, the 17 up at the top is the atomic number. So chlorine has 17 protons in its nucleus. Now, an extra tidbit. Because an atom likes to be neutral, have no charge, you're going to have the same number of electrons um, or the number of electrons are going to be the same as the number of protons. So if you have 17 protons, you're going to have 17 electrons. Uh, sorry for the little blooper there. Okay, so that's the atomic number. The symbol will be in the center of the square, and it's either going to be one or two letters that just serve to represent the element. Okay, so for chlorine, the symbol is Cl. The element name can come right under the symbol. That's just the name of the element. And then the number at the bottom. So here it's 35.453. That's the atomic mass. That's the mass of one atom of that element. Now, something to keep in mind is that mass is not in grams. Okay? Atoms are way too small to measure in grams. Okay? So, uh, what the unit is for this, it's AMU, which is Atomic Mass Unit, but you don't have to concern yourself too much with that. Just recognize that the atomic mass is not in grams because the atom is way too small to measure in grams. Okay, so big things to remember, atomic number is the number of top. It tells us the number of protons in the nucleus. Remember, the number of electrons will equal the number of protons. The symbol is the abbreviation for the element. And then the atomic mass is just the mass of one atom of that element. Okay, now the chemical formula. Chemical formula is just kind of a shorthand way of describing a chemical compound. The neat thing about a chemical formula is going to tell you exactly how many of each element are in that compound. It's going to tell you exactly what that compound's made of. So our example is good old H2O, which is water. Okay, so how do I break this down? Every new capital letter that you see is going to be a different element. So we have two capital letters here, the H and the O. So we have two different atoms in our H2O, okay? If there's a number after the capital letter, for example, there's a 2 after the H, that 2 tells me that there's two hydrogens in water, okay? If there's no number after the symbol, then there's only one of that particular atom. So there's no number after the O, so there's one oxygen in H2O. So just kind of to recap it, the two symbols that are in H2O are H and O. The H stands for hydrogen, the O stands for oxygen, and I have two hydrogens and one oxygen. Okay, I'll put up another video here uh, that will kind of walk through some uh, compounds and kind of walk through the process of breaking it down in a little bit more detail and a little bit more visual as well. Okay, so this is it for Matter Notes Part 2. Just kind of recap, matter is made up of atoms. We discussed the parts of the atom. Uh, the three main parts you need to know, proton positive, electron negative, and neutron is neutral. The protons and neutrons come together to make the nucleus. Kind of showed you the periodic table. 
and then uh, how to get information off the table, the atomic number, the mass, and the symbol, and then breaking down a chemical formula. If you have any questions, please ask, um, and thanks for listening. Oh, and don't forget the practice. Uh, there's going to be a second video that will go th through some practice on breaking down uh, chemical compounds or chemical formulas into the individual atoms that make that up. So check that video out. Questions? Contact me. Again, thanks for listening.